Well, the message that I want to bring today is uh, very simple. Uh, there is one aspect of the credit, or one aspect of the commons that has been overlooked, I believe, and it is credit. We talk about the air being a commons, water being a commons, uh, even land, the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, but credit is a commons that we have overlooked. And it's important that we recognize that credit is a commons. Every national currency collectivizes credit. Whether you're in the dollar zone or the euro zone or you're in Japan using yen or whatever, every, uh, every national currency collectivizes credit. And we've allowed credit to be monopolized and controlled by a combination of politicians and financiers. That's the basic message. Now I'll go through my slides, which you can sleep through if you want. Uh, we all know about the problems with enclosures and clearances. You know, we have examples in England, uh, the Enclosure Acts and the Highland Clearances. Uh, in the United States, uh, the Indians were forced into reservations uh, involuntarily. Uh, Buffalo Bill and his people wiped out the bisons so that deprived the Indians of their livelihood and means of subsistence. But you have to understand, in this case, uh, money is credit. Now, money has evolved through stages. We used to use commodities as money, uh, typically gold and silver, but then we started issuing banknotes backed by gold and silver. But eventually, bankers got the idea that they could issue banknotes on the basis of something else besides gold and silver on deposit. So they would take a mortgage, for example, on your house, and they would start issuing banknotes on the basis of that value. Uh, so modern money is nothing but credit, and it typically takes the form of bank deposits. And John Kenneth Galbraith, the uh, renowned economist of the 20th century, said, the way in which money is created is so simple that the mind is repelled. And I see this all the time when I try to explain it to people. Their eyes glaze over and it's just not that they can't understand it, it's just that they can't believe it. <laughs> so that's what money is. It's bank deposits that are created by banks when banks make, make loans. So the credit commons is that virtual pool of credit that enables economic exchange. Uh, as I've said, every money system collectivizes credit and it's our collective credit that supports every monetary system. So we can visualize the credit commons uh, as this uh, oval, and we all put into it, but the question is who can access it? Who can take out of it? Uh, right now, the access is controlled by banks that charge interest when they give us access. The way I put it is we give our credit to the banks, and then we beg them to lend some of it back to us and pay them interest for the privilege. Now, here's uh, a pictorial representation of that. You have the banks standing at the gate uh, deciding who's going to get access and on what terms. Now, the credit can either go into the private sector as loans for mortgages and business expansion, or it can go into the public sector as loans to government. Uh, if I had more time, I would explain the latest bubble and bust cycle, but I'll skip over that. So we have a growth imperative built into the monetary system. You know, compound interest is an exponential function. It's the hockey stick curve that Al Gore made famous in his movie. So we have this built-in growth imperative. Debt must increase simply with the passage of time. So banks have to keep making more loans and more loans in order for people to be able to pay what they owe on the old loans. So money is kept artificially scarce, it's misallocated, and it's expensive. It concentrates power, and it uh, concentrates wealth in the hands of a few who are the super class. Now, this isn't just theoretical. This chart shows the expansion of debt for all sectors in the United States economy over a period of time from 1965 
to uh, 2007. And you can see how it has grown exponentially. Now, the dashed line, which you hardly can see there, is gross domestic product, which is the total output of the United States economy. In 1965, the total debt for all sectors was one and a half times GDP. In 2007, it was three and a half times GDP. And George Soros, the billionaire speculator, says within the next couple of years, it's going to go to five times GDP. Well, how long can that go on? Well, not very long. So we've got to reclaim the credit commons. And we do that by creating our own uh, credit clearing associations locally and our own local exchange systems. So we have to become less dependent on uh, national currencies, less dependent on banks. So in addition to reclaiming the credit commons, we have to use our existing dollar and euro resources in ways that uh, support our communities and make us more self-reliant in our communities. So we need to localize our spending, our saving, our investing. So these are the emergent phenomena. We have exchanges like De Vir in Switzerland, which has been going for uh, 75 years. It now has 60,000 members, $2 billion in transactions annually. We have the, huh? Uh, well, we, I don't have time. <laughs> so these are my websites and blogs. These are my books. You can get more information about all of this in my books. You can order them online through Amazon.com or my publisher, Chelsea Green. Thank you very much.